Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. It's Thursday, February 13th, 2014, and here are top stories. Tonight, experts agree TSA scanners can be easily hacked. And Steve Pachinik exposes the spy state. That's next on the InfoWars Nightly News. And when we take America back, you Nazis are going to prison! And then there was one. We see now bankster-style mergers to create an information monopoly happening here in the U.S. We have, and globally, actually, as Kurt Nemo points out, monopolizing the Internet, Comcast gobbles up Time Warner. Now, Comcast is the largest media and communications transnational corporation in the world. And it announced today that it will absorb Time Warner, the world's second largest media and entertainment conglomerate, we saw this thing happen with banks back in 1998. Bank of America and NCNB merged, and it looked like they were not going to get approval from the government because it was the merger of two of the largest banks. It is unprecedented in what it was going to create. When they got approval and they merged in 1998, it set off a wave of consolidation, and 10 years later, we had the failures that everybody knows that uh, the too big to fail banks. They are now also too big to jail. Well, this is what is happening already in media companies. Already, we only had about five large media companies. Now, the two largest ones are going to consolidate. And what does that mean? Look at some of the companies that this is, uh, involves. In Time Warner, AOL, that includes companies like CNN, Warner Brothers, Turner Broadcasting, New Line Cinema, Castle Rock Entertainment. Those are some of the content providers. We also see in Comcast, then, they have NBC, Universal, Universal Pictures, of course, MGM, United Artists. They nearly took over Disney a few years ago. Now, all those content providers are going to combine. That's going to have some impact on the free flow of information. You can bet the mainstream media is going to get even more controlled, more monopolistic in its voice. But the other thing that's going to affect everybody is the control on the Internet because they are the biggest controller of internet service providers. We saw this with uh, AT&T's broadband services were consumed into Comcast earlier. Now Time, Warner, AOL, all of that is going to be combined together into one large controlled company. And that's going to have an impact on the cost that you pay for your in internet, as well as whether or not you see that getting any faster. There's not going to be any competition to push that along. But it also has concern for what it's going to mean for the information that goes out there. I mean, who needs CISPA if you've got a company who is so closely joined to Washington at the hip? It's well known, as Kurt Nemo points out, that Comcast has, quote, a wealth of connections in Washington that essentially they own the FCC. So that's something to be very concerned about, the prospect that we're going to have hand-picked political apparatchiks deciding the fate of the Internet without bias on a par with a government-sanctioned monopoly doing basically the same thing. That's from Kurt Nemo's article. Now, Paul Joseph Watson has a story on InfoWars today. Homeland Security is now going to activate a national license plate recognition database. He says the Department of Homeland Security is going to activate a national license plate tracking system, and that's going to create a hot list of target vehicles so that they can scoop all this information up and look for what they call, quote, Criminal aliens and absconders. Absconders. You know, those are people who, according to the dictionary, leave hurriedly in order to avoid detection. You're not going to be able to avoid detection from these people. They're going to keep it in their database. But, of course, why should we worry about them creating a hot list of target vehicles? Well, we've just seen the government kill a lot of innocent people just this last week with drone strikes that were based on metadata. And, of course, your license plate is metadata about you. And the troubling concern about that is not just that they're going to use this in a way to target political activists, but that they're also going to have mistakes with this. Can you imagine with all the shootings that we've seen of the police, if you're on a hot target list and they pull you over something, they're going to be very trigger happy. Now, Paul Joseph Watson points out how this has worked in the UK and elsewhere. He says in the UK, political activists have been targeted by having their vehicles added to the hot list after just attending protests. One person was questioned under anti-terrorism laws after he traveled to take part in an anti-war demonstration. And critics of the system in Australia have condemned it as a Pandora's box for an abuse of power, mistakes, and illegal disclosure. 
Now, speaking of illegal disclosure, look at this article from Steve Watson. Security experts say that TSA scanners are wide open to hacking. Not only are they ineffective in terms of finding people, we've seen this pointed out by John Corbett when he demonstrated that if you put firearms on the side of you as you go through the scanners, they cannot detect those. And of course, the TSA put a brave face on it, said, well, we're not going to respond to that. But then they started scanning like every fifth person or something. But of course, they know that there is no threat. Their internal documents that were uh, put out on the internet on pacer.gov after John Corbett sued them recently showed unredacted documents said that they that the Homeland Security TSA said that there was no threat at airports or airplanes yet your information your naked body scans can easily be hacked by somebody into those systems now the article says the supervisor's password screen could be subverted through just a simple SQL injection attack but of course remember at the Super Bowl we just saw recently that the Super Bowl security team they, they took a picture of it with the CBS News crew you could see their password was up on the screen and that was a major breach of security but what was also interesting was that their password was just the word welcome although they got kind of tricky and they changed the E's to threes. I'm sure that would fool any hacker. And of course, for 20 years, they used eight zeros as the nuclear football code. Now in Illinois, electricity customers are going to be forced to buy smart meters. This is an article from the Weekly Standard. And first they point out that some people have been able to use the feedback from smart meters to save some money. But then they point out some interesting things that I hadn't seen before about smart meters. I said, one meticulous customer interviewed by the Times compared her usage for the month of July 2008 before the meter was installed to July 2009, found that her recorded usage had jumped from 474 kilowatt hours to 646 kilowatt hours, and her bill was $20 higher. Another one said that his bills were jumping even though he had installed a lot of new insulation. Are they getting errors in these readings? That's not something we've seen before, but what we have seen is the arrogance of the utility companies. What they came back and said was they were going to charge people $23 if they wanted per month, if they wanted to opt out of this. But then they said this, if customers make the decision to refuse a smart meter now and incur monthly charges associated with this choice, it should be with full knowledge that this refusal is simply deferring the inevitable. In other words, we are going to make you opt into the smart meter system, whether you like it or not. You can pay us $23 a month now if you want, but eventually you're going to be a part of that. And this is a government objective nationwide and we understand that there are not only economic issues with this, when they charge you more for a time of day use, you don't really have a lot of control over when you're going to use that electricity any more than you can avoid rush hour traffic. You are not going to be able to avoid rush hour electricity charges. But there's also major privacy issues as well as health issues. But don't worry, they're going to force you to do that unless you get together and educate other people about the dangers and the issues involved in that. We can help you with that here at InfoWars. If you want to support our operation, one subscription can be shared with up to 10 people simultaneously. It's a great way to inform people. Well, that's it for our news portion of the program, but stay tuned right after the break. We're going to be talking to Dr. Steve Pachinik. He was someone who served over five administrations in the intelligence community at a very high level. He's going to talk about Vladimir Putin. He's going to talk about our assistant secretary of state who just made the F the EU statement. And he's going to talk about what's going on in the Ukraine. So stay tuned. Introducing Pro One, all of your filtration in one system, portable, on the go. No more do you have two or three filters to just reduce sodium fluoride. You have a system that cuts out the sodium fluoride and up to 95% of hydrofluorosilicic acid. Advanced manufacturing technology combines silver impregnated white ceramic with new Aquamedics advanced media for removal of fluoride and other heavy metals, all in one filter element. It is the only one that does it and out of the gates. We have it discounted at 10% off with promo code WATER. This is the only system that in one unit helps reduce or remove pesticides, herbicides, chloramines, ammonia, and chlorine, hydrofluorosilicic acid, the most common form of fluoride not covered by other fluoride filter brands, and sodium hexafluorosilicate. Get your Pro Pure with a new Pro One filter today at InfoWarsStore.com or by calling 888-253-3139. The 
facts are in. The studies are legion. Sodium fluoride and other toxic members of the fluoride family are devastating the health and cognitive ability of the American people. So why are the social engineers adding it to the water? Simple. Dumb down the host population that the parasitic technocracy is feeding on. We may not have been able to get fluoride out of the water supply yet, but we can help to get it out of our bodies. I am extremely excited to announce the exclusive InfoWars Life Fluoride Shield formulation, fusing six of the best documented ingredients from around the world to help the body remove not just toxic fluoride residues from the body, but a whole host of toxic substances. Let's take a stand against the globalist by blocking their poisons with Fluoride Shield. I use Fluoride Shield every day. Secure your Fluoride Shield and other pioneering formulations at InfoWarsLife.com today. Let's start cleansing our bodies now and support the InfoWar at the same time. That's InfoWarsLife.com. Well, joining us tonight is Dr. Steve Pachenik. He's one of the world's most experienced international crisis negotiators and hostage negotiators. He's worked for over 20 years in this field for over five U.S. administrations. And of course, he's worked with Tom Clancy on a couple of book series, the Tom Clancy Op Center and NetForce book series. We want to talk to him tonight about his take on the Edward Snowden documents, what he believes is behind this as someone experienced in the intelligence community, as well as what he thinks is going on in the Ukraine. Welcome, Dr. Pachenik. What's foremost on your mind tonight? Well, let me tell you what I think would be relevant for okay. both our answers. Number one is Snowden and what it really means in terms of intelligence and the amount of money that we're paying for it, which is $60 billion, and why Snowden is very similar to Ellsberg mm -hmm. from the blog that I wrote. The yes. second thing that we can talk about is, in fact, what constitutes uh, the change in government, why we are in many ways in a military coup and what's been happening all over the world, because in Thailand there's a coup, Pakistan, there's a coup. Uh, there's going to be a coup as well. And Egypt was a military coup. And why is America not having a military coup? Well, we do, because mm -hmm. every legislative area is under military control. So mm -hmm. what does that mean in light of the Snowden and in light of everything else that we're talking about? What I'm basically saying throughout all of this from my experience is that we have a, a whole phenomenon going on that has nothing to do with the national security or the legitimacy of the United States. And that's the military and the industrial complex playing around at the expense of the American public. So it's draining out $60 billion or $150 billion, depending on how you count the appropriations, because now we're beginning to falter as a superpower. On the one hand, we have the superpower position, but we're not. The other thing that's very major for us I would talk about two of them. One is the position in the Middle East, why we had to get out, and why today we had problems in Iraq and Afghanistan where we didn't plan to have those uh, consequences of war, the collateral damage. In other words, we went into two countries that we had no right to go in as a result of the incompetency of our presidency. So what I want to get at is that we have had for over 40 years, Republican or Democrats, really incompetent presidents who have not really understood of war, the nature of financial restitution, and the nature of, of what it is that we Americans need to have, which is prosperity, entrepreneurship, and you know, a middle class. It has nothing to do with being Republican or Democrat. In turn, we have wasted our resources into the Middle East, and now we're shifting into a far more dangerous area. That's why Silicon Valley secondary to me, although it may be primary to you, and that is China and Japan, where there really can be conflict mm -hmm. over the Spratly Islands, over oil, and why we're shifting, and why, again, we don't necessarily have a basic interest. Uh, you know, it begins into the nature of, it really gets into the nature of what is America right now, and, and does it have relevancy to its political system, and the answer is no. Yeah, you wrote in your blog, that's a very good point, you wrote in your blog that the relevance of the intelligence community is much like the military, it's relevant only to itself. You said our military has no need for the U.S., right. the U.S. has no need for the military, and it's right. the same way with yes. the civilian military intelligence yes. community. and that's what they feel. They've been very clear to me and to others that